Hey guys, welcome to Bed with Made Simple. This video is about chronic separative otitis media. If you are new to my channel, I'd highly recommend you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so you can keep watching all my upcoming videos for free. Chronic separative otitis media is a condition which is characterized by long standing middle ear infection and is associated with ear discharge and permanent perforation of the tympanic membrane. The perforation is permanent in the case of chronic separative otitis media because the edges of the perforation are covered by squamous epithelium. Okay, so that prevents a natural closure of the uh, perforation in tympanic membrane. The types of uh, uh, chronic separative otitis media are tubo tympanic and atico antral types. Okay, so uh, you must know about uh, you must know all the things about tubo tympanic type especially because you're gonna get a long case of tubo tympanic uh, type of chronic separative otitis media in your exam. So you must know everything about it to get good marks in your exams. Okay, so and, and you must also know about atico antral disease as well because. Uh, you'll be asked about that as well so but i'm just uh, telling that you must know uh, more about tubo tympanic disease compared to atica and disease so keep watching this video till the end so tubo tympanic type of chronic separative otitis media so first let me tell you about the key points of uh, tubo tympanic type of the tubo tympanic type of the, uh, csom so it is a safe or benign type uh, why is it safe or benign type is that uh, it's because Tubo tympanic type of CSOM is usually not associated with much of complications, so it is safe or benign type. It usually involves the antero inferior part of middle ear cleft. Okay, and uh, the perforation is usually central perforation in the tympanic membrane. Uh, I'll explain about the types of perforation uh, in this video, so just keep watching and just try to remember that uh, central perforation in the pars tensa of uh, tympanic membrane is usually uh, safe. And it's usually the type of perforation which happens in tubo tympanic type of CSOM. And as I told you already, uh, tubo tympanic type of CSOM is safe or benign type, so it is not associated with much of complications. This is a picture of a middle ear cleft. As I told you, tubo tympanic type of CSOM usually involves the antero inferior part of the middle ear cleft. The antero inferior part of the middle ear cleft is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium. So if uh, the antero inferior part of the middle ear cleft uh, gets uh, infected, the ciliated columnar epithelium uh, gets activated and uh, they'll start to produce profuse uh, secretions. Okay, That is the reason for uh, having profuse secretions in case of tubo tympanic disease. Whereas the rest of the middle ear cleft is lined by uh, squamous epithelium. So if that part is getting infected, uh, the squamous epithelium will not be able to produce much of secretions as compared to the ciliated epithelium. The, I'm sorry, the columnar epithelium. So the squamous epithelium uh, won't be able to produce much of secretions. So we have scanty discharge in case of articoantral disease. So how do we uh, get chronic separative otitis media? It can occur as a sickle of acute otitis media which is not treated properly. And it can also occur as a result of ascending infections via the eustachian tube. As we all know, the eustachian tube is a tube which connects the pharynx with the uh, middle ear. Uh, if a person gets recurrent upper respiratory tract infections or pharyngitis, the infected uh, secretions can reach the middle ear cavity from the pharynx uh, via the eustachian tube and it can cause chronic separative otitis media. So, what happens in uh, tuber tympanic type of CSOM? There'll be perforation in the Pars tensa, which is usually central perforation. Uh, okay, so that is what we uh, we can observe with an otoscope, and through the perforation we can observe the middle ear mucosa. If the person is not uh, having an active middle ear disease, uh, or uh, so if the if the infection is not in its active stage, uh, what we can see is that the middle ear mucosa will be pale. But if the patient has active middle ear disease right now, uh, there'll be uh, and which is which is associated with much of secretions and uh, uh, much of uh, ear discharge. We can see the middle ear mucosa to be red, congested, and edematous. Sometimes polyps may form. Polyps are nothing but edematous mucosa of the middle ear, which uh, forms polypus growth, which can protrude through the perforated. Uh, tympanic membrane and can 
enter the external auditory canal. The ossicles are usually normal in case of tubo tympanic disease. Uh, there can be tube tympanosclerosis uh, in uh, tubo tympanic disease. What this tympanosclerosis is that uh, there will be hyalinization and subepithelial calcification. Okay, so that is what is known as tympanosclerosis. So we can see chalky white deposits on various structures like the ear ossicles and over the tympanic membrane if tympanosclerosis is present. And, and finally, uh, in the healing stage, uh, fibrosis and additions can form. Okay, so these are the various uh, events which can happen in tubo tympanic disease. So this is a representation of a polyp uh, which is growing from the middle mucosa through the perforation into the external auditory canal. So the common pathogens involved in tubo tympanic disease are Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Proteus, E. coli, Staph aureus, Bacteroides fragilis, Anaerobic streptococci. The clinical features are ear discharge, which is usually profuse, non-false smelling, mucoid or mucopuridin. I've already explained to you the reason for profuse discharge in case of tubo tympanic disease. Uh, to recollect, the tubo tympanic disease is the disease of the antero-inferior part of middle ear cleft which includes the eustachian tube and the anterior part of the middle, middle ear cavity. This part is lined by secretory epithelium, which is ciliated corner epithelium. So if it gets inflamed, it will be able to produce much of profuse discharge. Okay, so that's the reason for having profuse discharge in tuber tympanic disease. Please make sure to answer the, uh, this question in the same way which I've explained, you, uh, explained to you so that uh, you'll be able to impress your teacher because that's what they exp uh, expect from you, okay? So that's a re uh, they'll be asking you, what's the reason for profuse discharge in tuber tympanic disease? What's the reason for scanty discharge in articulatory disease, okay? So it's very simple. If you answer in a simple way, uh, like I did, uh, they'll be uh, impressed and you can get good marks, okay? So just try to understand the concepts rather than mugging, mugging them up. So the hearing loss in tuber tympanic disease is conductive type of hearing loss usually. And uh, there's an important effect which is known as round window shielding effect uh, what is round window shielding effect is that uh, okay let me simplify this uh, if a patient has a perforation in the tympanic membrane normally the hearing uh, will be impaired isn't it but in the presence of ear discharge in tuber tympanic disease the ear discharge uh, will improve the hearing uh, in these patients so this is uh, kind of awkward isn't it like when I came to know about this effect first uh, for, the, for the first time I was actually uh, shocked like it was interesting to know like uh, so the ear discharge uh, what it does is that it helps to maintain the face differential so the ear discharge will be providing a shielding effect over the round window so the sound effect sound waves which reach uh, the ear ear cap middle ear cavity will fall uh, first on the oval window and so the sound can be conducted normally but if the perforation is present and there is no ear discharge the sound waves will fall on the oval window as well as the round window at the same time there won't be phase differential so what will happen is that the, the, uh, the sound waves cancel each other so the patient will not be able to hear normally so the phase differential is maintained by the presence of ear discharge in the case of tuber tympanic disease okay so if you drain the ear discharge the hearing of the patient will be impaired okay so this has to be explained to a patient who comes with ear discharge you have to explain them that you may be hearing normally right now but uh, after draining your uh, middle ear secretion your hearing may worsen and that is because of this okay you need to explain this to the patient before doing this because if you're not telling this and you're just draining the secretions out uh, the, the ear discharge out uh, the patient may complain that i was able to hear normally uh, before you did before you intervene and now my hearing worsened okay so to avoid that you must explain about this to a patient this is kind of interesting isn't it so the other clinical features are perforation so now let us talk about the perforation in a bit more detail the perforation can be in past tensa so first of all in past tensa we have central perforation which is safe and is seen in tubo tympanic disease and marginal perforation which is unsafe and is seen in articoantral disease and the perforations in parts placida are known as attic perforation okay so attic actually means roof so let's talk about the perforations in parts tensa first we have central perforation central perforation can be anterior posterior inferior and subtotal and subtotal is when it's kind of huge but it's not uh, eroding the entire parts tensa okay some part of the parts tensa is still intact okay 
So these are the types of central perforation and central perforation is usually seen in tuber tympanic disease and it's safer compared to uh, the marginal perforation. The marginal perforation is seen in articoantral disease and it's associated with the complications like cholesteatoma and all that. Okay, we'll be talking about that. So marginal perforation is classified into posterior superior, which is the most common type in marginal perforation, anterior, inferior, and total perforation, which, which also erodes the fibrous annulus along with everything, along with the uh, pars tensa. Okay, the total pars tensa as well as the fibrous annulus will be gone in case of total perforation. So these are the types of perforations of tympanic membrane. So let's see some pictures of uh, perforations, okay? So so that you will not be forgetting it. So the central perforation. This is a picture showing central perforation of pars tensa. Uh, this is the tympanic membrane of the right side, and we have perforation in the pars tensa, which is anterior to the lateral process of malleus. Okay, so so this is an anterior uh, type of central perforation in pars tensa. This is uh, this is safer okay so this is seen in tuber tympanic disease this is a picture showing subtotal perforation as you can see uh, some part uh, like two-thirds of the pars tensa is gone but fibrous annulus is still intact and some part of pars tensa is still intact okay so this is what is known as subtotal perforation here we have total perforation here the entire pars tensa is gone and the fibrous annulus is also gone so this is what is known as total perforation so this is posterior superior marginal perforation. This usually leads to articoantral uh, disease. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, another unsafe type of perforation. And we have attic perforation, uh, which occurs when there's perforation in the pars placida of tympanic membrane. So clinical features uh, uh, we summed up. Uh, the ear discharge will be profuse, non false smelling, mucoid or mucopurulent. The hearing loss is conductive type. There will be perforation, which is usually in the pars tensa and a central type of perforation. The middle ear mucosa will be red, edematous, and swollen. So now let's go to investigations. First of all, you perform otoscopy. Like uh, in clinical postings, you'll usually be uh, performing uh, examination of the uh, tympanic membrane with the help of. Uh, um, head mirror isn't it like uh, if you're allowed to use otoscopy it's fine uh, so you have to first perform otoscopy and then after that you, you must perform examination under microscopy okay so you should be performing examination under microscopy to visualize the tympanic membrane and the middle layer if uh, middle layer mucosa through the perforation and after that, uh, we should perform audiogram. Okay, so here we will be able to identify if the patient has conductive hearing loss or sensory neural hearing loss. And before that, you can do tympanic, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the tuning fork tests. Okay, that is clinical assessment. After that, you should do audiogram so that you document uh, the hearing loss of the patient so that you can advise the patient and you can plan the management modalities accordingly. Okay, so you can tell the patient how much of hearing can be improved and if the hearing can be improved or not after intervening in the form of surgery and all that should be uh, planned based on the audiogram findings and we must perform a culture and sensitivity of ear discharge uh, to identify which organisms are present and the appropriate antibiotics mastoid x-rays or ct scan of temporal bone are also required so in mastoid x-rays or in the CT scan temporal bone CT scan of the temporal bone we should see if there is bone destruction or not usually tympano uh, tubo tympanic type of CSOM will not have bone destruction okay so so these are the investigations which are commonly performed uh, in case of tubo tympanic disease but i would recommend you not to mention otoscopy in investigations i just mentioned it to tell you about uh, otoscopy but uh, uh, you need not mention otoscopy when you write in write in your theory exams okay so you can just start from examination under microscopy the aims of treatment are to control the infection and ear discharge so this, this is the primary aim the second aim is to correct the hearing loss okay so the first aim should always be the prior aim okay so you must always focus on controlling the infection and ear discharge. 
the hearing loss uh, cannot be improved in some cases where there is sensory neural hearing loss and there is uh, if it's a complicated type of articulatory disease where in some cases the hearing loss cannot be uh, improved okay so it depends okay so the aims of treatment are these two so the treatment involves ear cleaning so which is known as oral toilet and we have ear drops uh, so antibiotics will be provided and uh, the antibiotics uh, can be combined with steroids which can control the inflammation and uh, we have systemic antibiotics to control the infection and we should also correct the underlying cause uh, we should examine the adenoids if it's a pediatric patient and if it's inflamed uh, we sh that's that 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 is the that should be the cause for chronic separative order dysmedia in that patient so we should correct that before before correcting this because if we leave uh, if we don't correct that the patient may develop recurrent uh, uh, middle ear infections okay so the underlying cause has to be corrected and we should advise the patients about uh, how to uh, deal with this condition so they should uh, prevent uh, entry of water into the ear uh, and uh, uh, and certain other uh, ear hygiene uh, advices has to be provided to the patients and the the ear the ear polyps and ear, various ear granulations uh, are all should be uh, removed surgically with the help of uh, microscopy and uh, we can perform reconstructive surgery later uh, which is tympanoplasty uh, we should correct the uh, middle ear perforation with the help of a graft, which is usually which is usually tempor temporal fascia, the temporal uh, fascia graft. Okay, so that is the most commonly used graft uh, to correct the perforation in case of uh, uh, tympanoplasty. Okay, so now let's talk about articulatory type of CSOM. It is called as unsafe or dangerous type because it is associated with complications it usually involves the posterior superior part of middle ear cleft uh, so the perforation here is usually attic or marginal perforation we have already seen the pictures this is often associated with complications like cholesteatoma so here we have a picture of middle ear cleft and the posterior superior part of the middle ear cleft is usually involved in articoantral disease. So the clinical implication is that this part is lined by uh, squamous epithelium. So if this part gets infected, the squamous epithelium will not be able to produce much of discharge. So we have scanty discharge in case of articoantral disease. So the causes are same as in tubo tumoral type okay the same bacteria the same way of uh, uh, the etiology is also the same so the causes are same as tubo tumoral type so what happens here is that uh, the patients may develop cholesteatoma cholesteatoma is nothing but uh, it actually means skin in a wrong place so there'll be keratinizing squamous epithelium in the uh, tympanic membrane over the tympanic membrane area that, that is what is known as cholesteatoma it is uh, associated with various complications okay so normally keratinizing squamous epithelium should not be present in that area so if that's present uh, in the middle ear cavity it is known as cholesteatoma okay so it has got bone eroding property and it's associated with various complications uh, I, I'm, I'm, I thought of making a separate video on cholesteatoma because it is a very important topic and uh, uh, you, you, we most commonly get long uh, long questions on cholesteatoma so you must know more about it in detail okay so I thought I'll be, uh, I thought I'll make a separate video on cholesteatoma explaining all the theories involved uh, in the formation of cholesteatoma and all that okay and the ear ossicles can uh, undergo inflammation and granulation tissue can form there can be necrosis of uh, the ear ossicles so that is uh, uh, that can impair hearing and there can be formation of cholesterol granuloma so there's a term known as cholesteatoma here sometimes the cholesteatoma can bridge the gap uh, between the perforation and the uh, and the oval window okay so what happens is that since this bridges the gap 
uh, the patient will be able to hear normally in the presence of perforation. This is kind of similar to what we saw in uh, the uh, in the round window shielding effect, isn't it? Like although the mechanism is different, it's kind of similar. The patient in the presence of perforation is still being uh, able to hear normally. Okay, so this is known as cholesteatoma here. Okay, so these people are known as cholesteatoma here. So symptoms are ear discharge with a scanty, foul smelling, usually serous. I've told you the reason for scanty ear discharge. Uh, the ear discharge is foul smelling because it is associated with bony erosion. Okay, so that's why it is foul smelling. It's, it gets infected. The hearing loss can be conductive or sensory neural hearing loss, and there can be bleeding from granulations or polyp. So the signs which can be observed are perforation in the attic or posterior superior uh, or the posterior superior marginal type of perforation can be seen. There can be retraction pockets which can be seen. Cholesteatoma can be seen. Now I'll explain about retraction pocket in a bit more detail. Retraction pocket is nothing but invagination of tympanic membrane in the attic or posterior superior area of parch tensa. Okay, so I've told you that the uh, these areas, the attic and the posterior superior area of parch tensa, are actually involved in articular disease. So if the if there's invagination of tympanic membrane uh, in these areas, uh, it is known as retraction pockets. There are four stages of retraction pockets. Stage one is where we have mild retraction of the uh, tympanic membrane in the attic or posterior superior area of past tensa. Stage two is when the retracted, uh, the invaginated part of the retraction pocket will be in contact with incus. Stage three is known as middle ear atelectasis. Here, uh, the middle ear cavity is uh, collapsed. Okay, so that's why it is known as middle ear atelectasis. But in stage three, the middle ear mucosa will still be active. In fourth stage, the final stage, uh, it is known as adhesive otitis media, when the uh, tympanic membrane is in, is in complete contact with the opposite wall. Okay, so it will be con in contact with the promontories. So here, uh, the middle ear mucosa will be inactive. Okay, so these are the four stages of retraction pocket. So this is just a representation of retraction pocket. Here you can see that uh, in the attic, you can see the it is slowly invading inside, invaginating inside. So the and there you go, like there'll be uh, formation of retraction pockets in various stages. Okay, so this is just a representation of uh, formation of retraction pockets. The assessment is similar to what you did in tubo tympanic disease. First, you need to do examination under a microscope. You can see cholesteatoma, and then you perform tuning fork tests and audiogram, and then x ray mastoids or CT scan temporal bone. Here you can see uh, bone destruction, okay? So that is very common in articular disease. And then you should perform cultural sensitivity of the ear discharge. The treatment of articular disease is surgery, okay? And then uh, you should perform reconstructive surgery, which is usually myringoplasty, okay? So tympanoplasty combined with ossicular reconstruction is known as myringoplasty. So there are five uh, uh, sorry, the myringoplasty, which is combined with ossicular, uh, ossicular uh, reconstruction, ear ossicular reconstruction, is known as tympanoplasty. There are five types of tympanoplasty, okay? So, I'll be talking about that in a separate video, okay? The ear surgeries, I want to talk about the ear surgeries in a separate video in detail. So we also have conservative treatment, but the role of conservative treatment in case of uh, uh, articular disease is very low. This can just be used to uh, control the secretions and to uh, control the symptoms in the patients. Okay, so otherwise conservative treatment is not of much use in articular disease. Now there are other ways of classifying chronic otitis media. It can be classified as mucosal disease and squamosal disease. The mucosal disease is further classified into active mucosal disease which is chronic separative otitis media, inactive mucosal disease uh, in which there is a permanent perforation in the tympanic membrane, and healed mucosal disease 
which is also known as adhesive otitis media and the squamosal disease can be further classified into inactive squamosal disease in which there will be just retraction pockets uh, okay so i've already explained about the stages of retraction pockets in this video so we also have active squamosal disease uh, in which the patient has cholesteatoma and uh, the, there will be ear discharge in these patients so this is an alternative way of classifying chronic otitis media so in my upcoming videos i'll be talking about these topics and the topics which are mentioned in green color are actually very important for exams so please stay tuned for these videos i'll try to make uh, these videos very soon so uh, so hit the subscribe button and stay tuned so that you get notified when i upload these videos as well please don't forget to check out my merch the link is in the description of this video and also in the cards and also there are certain amazon affiliate links which are mentioned in this description so if you guys use those links to buy anything in amazon uh, I'll, I'll be getting a part of it as a commission so it will be indirectly helping my channel okay so please consider doing it so we came to the end of this video uh, if you like this video please make sure to hit the like button share this video to your friends and, and tell your valuable suggestion in the comment section below and you can help me to make more videos by donating on www.patreon.com slash simple and don't forget to check out these other videos which are, uh, which are shown here and you can follow me on all the uh, uh, social media the links are in the description you can check out my blog uh, so thank you so much for watching this video till the end i'll see you guys in my next video